Entertainment lawyers are also a very important part of the artist team. Entertainment law is a very small field, sometimes even encompasses sports law. You have many organizations that uh, deal with both entertainment and sports law. However, entertainment lawyers you'll usually find specialize in one or more areas, usually music law or TV and film law. Some entertainment lawyers, of course, work in both of those areas, but it's very important to find experienced entertainment lawyers that work in the specific field that you're involved in if you're a talent. This is really starting to cross over into different areas right now as you have sports personalities that are getting more involved in music and film and vice versa. You have people in the music area that are getting involved in sports. You have Jay-Z that just started his own sports uh, talent agency. So it's important to find people that have experience in the specific areas that you need to help in. Entertainment law is also a pretty small field. There's only a very few people that practice this type of law on a full-time basis. I consider myself to be very lucky to have had the career I've had in this field. And it really requires the entertainment lawyer to do much like I did. I was fortunate enough to find a great client at the beginning of my career, the OJs. And I, my career then grew as a result of that. There are two primary types of entertainment lawyers that are really going to work on behalf of artists and their companies. One is the litigation attorney. A litigator is someone that tries cases, usually in front of a judge or jury. In other words, they are court lawyers. I call them suit and tie lawyers. In other words, they're the lawyers that file lawsuits and try lawsuits. They go to court, they appear in front of judges, try cases in front of juries and judges. Entertainment litigators might be involved in such actions as copyright infringement breach of contract suits. Litigators sometimes are paid on an hourly basis and most experienced litigators and entertainment lawyers in general can earn between $300 to $1,000 an hour. And an hourly rate will usually apply to situations where clients are being sued and the attorney has to defend them in court. So they'll keep track of their hours and bill them on an hourly basis. However, in certain instances, litigators might take a case on where a client has a claim against someone else, where there's the potential of winning a money settlement or money judgment against another client. Someone might have infringed on their rights. And in that instance, sometimes the litigators will take the case on what is called a contingency fee basis. In a contingency fee agreement, the attorney doesn't bill on an hourly basis, but they receive their money contingent upon them winning the case on behalf of their client. And they get paid instead on a certain percentage of whatever they might recover on their client's behalf. In most situations, litigators will charge a third of whatever they receive if the matter is settled prior to them filing a lawsuit in court. If they have to file a lawsuit, sometimes the litigators will be paid a fee of 40% because once the lawsuit is filed, they have to put in a lot more time. They have to make court appearances. They have to pursue discovery, filing uh, interrogatories and taking depositions. So it can be a very lucrative field. The entertainment litigation field is even smaller. Once again, there's just a very few hundred people that practice that type of law on a full-time basis. I happen to be the second type of entertainment lawyer. That is the transactions attorney. What does a transaction attorney do? Well, we usually are involved in the negotiation of contracts, establishing business organizations on behalf of clients, monitoring the contracts and their business dealings to make sure that everything is handled according to the contracts and the business deals that we work so hard to get our clients involved in. 
Transactions attorneys may also be paid on an hourly basis. And at times they can be paid on a contingency fee basis. Many times transactions attorneys will have relationships with record companies and with publishing companies and will do what is called a provider service, which is called shopping. Or in other words, trying to shop a deal or try to get a deal on behalf of their client, either a recording contract or a publishing contract. And if that happens, many times the attorneys will charge a percentage fee. Usually that fee is 5% of whatever monies are derived from that particular contract. It's important for you to know that attorneys also have a fiduciary obligation to their clients, just as personal managers do. Attorneys are put in a position of trust. Their clients place their trust in them to look out for their client's interest over their own. And sometimes this can create conflict of interest problems. Most state bar associations that regulate attorneys prohibit attorneys from going into business with their clients because at some point there is the potential that the attorney's interest could be adverse to that of their client. Conflict of interest issues can also be raised when an attorney represents a group. Suppose a band of four people come into my office and say, Mr. Kellogg, we want you to represent us. At that point, I have to find out what each band member does. What are the talents of each band member? And it can really create problems. You could have a lead singer that is also a songwriter. You can have a guitar player that only plays guitar, a drummer that only plays drums, Another bass player that might sing and might contribute with the lead singer as far as writing songs. In other words, they all have unique talents that need to be represented possibly individually. And so in that situation, usually you have to advise clients that when you represent the group at some point, if there appears to be a conflict of interest between any of the four of them, they need to go out and hire their own individual attorney. It's important to recognize that lawyers, just like personal managers, are regulated by the states in which they do business. The Supreme Court of each state registers and regulates attorneys and give them licenses to practice law. And that's the reason why personal managers shouldn't necessarily be entertainment lawyers. I was told this years ago, don't try to be a personal manager while you're still licensed as a lawyer. Many times I have artists that come to me and say, Mr. Kellogg, will you manage me? And I say, no, I'm not a manager. I'm strictly an entertainment lawyer. Here's the problem. If you're acting in the capacity as a personal manager and you're also an entertainment lawyer, should your artist have a problem and feel that you have a conflict of interest issue or that you've breached your fiduciary duty as a personal manager, they can file a complaint with the Supreme Court of the state in which you're licensed as a lawyer. And that body, the Supreme Court, could disbar you from practicing law if they found that you've actually violated a fiduciary duty or you've created some kind of conflict of interest with your artist. So you have to really make a decision whether or not you want to be a personal manager or an attorney. I've chosen just to be an attorney.